Okay, continuation of the previous one. We're right here where we're about to do some algebra. And the reason for doing the rationalizing step is when I have a minus b, a plus b, that gives us the difference of squares. Tremendously useful. And when I square a square root, it goes away. So I guess I'll just, yeah, I'll just rewrite them. I shouldn't write so small. Okay, so now the bottom, I'm just going to leave, leave that to hang out and hope that that's not going to be a problem. And we're going to address it with the methods we already have. So the square root of x squared plus 4x squared gives me x squared plus 4x. Minus x times x is minus x squared. And they cancel. That's probably a good thing. And let me tell you the big mistake people that usually make here. Because you, when you do this, square root of x squared plus 4x times itself, because this comes out, what your subconscious typically thinks is, oh, somebody um, just changed the rules for how you multiply things. And therefore, x times x is x. Somehow, it doesn't actually get squared. Well, it didn't get squared here. It did get squared. It was a square root, and that got squared, and that's why it's x squared plus 4x. Many, 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 many people just put x here. Okay, But it's actually a 4x. Is, is what's remaining in the numerator. Let me switch to a new page so I can write a little bigger and more clearly. Okay. Well, actually, I can do one thing in place here. Now, what's what's happening? Big number. 4x x is getting big. That's a big number. This is big. This is big. This is big, too. Infinity over infinity. Big over big. How do we tame those? We multiply by 1 over x on the top and bottom. Why is it 1 over x? Remember, the, the, the real rule for doing it really carefully is you look at the, the degree of the, the denominator. Again, you might think, oh wait, why shouldn't, shouldn't I multiply by 1 over x squared? But remember, when it, that's inside a square root, that behaves as if it's, um, as if it's just x. If you just do a cover-up really quickly, that's going to behave like it's x. Again, the cover-up's kind of dangerous here, but it's really going to behave like it's an x. So I multiply by 1 over x, top and bottom. And what do I get? I get 4 over, have to be really careful here, this plus is outside a square root, this plus is inside. You cannot take that out. You cannot ever take the square root of a sum and simplify that and take it apart into pieces. That's what we're trying to avoid here. If you could, this problem would be completely trivial, and you'd also get the wrong answer in that way as well. Okay, So x over x is going to be a 1, and then I'm going to bring that in as a 1 over x squared. And I'm going to simplify that thing inside the square root. You can see how much fun algebra this is. This is just a wild ride of wonderful algebra, huh? It's just what you wanted to do. It's one of those problems that's pretty lengthy. Ah, but finally, there's only one x in here. How hard can it be? And indeed, I've gotten it to a place where that guy is going to zero. You still have to be careful, even at the very last step. Because there's these square roots and everything, it's just hard, hard, sometimes hard to do. The square root of 1 plus 0 is just 1. So this whole thing is a 1. Plus 1 is 2, and 4 over 2 is 2. And that's what we saw on the calculator. Whew! That's a lot of work. And you know what? It can even get trickier. If this had been a limit as x goes to minus infinity, when we went to here, we would have had to worry about the absolute value stuff. But I'm not going to do that level of trickiness right now.